Hello and welcome to the 10th video in the Introduction to R workshop series accompanying video set brought to you by Akirama Burkhoff Statistics Unit. Um, I've talked about the Statistics Unit in previous videos and the services we can offer if you're a part of Akirama Burkhoff Metro North or MARTA Research and we have our contact details there. Um, today we're going to be looking at survival analysis. So there are two packages there that you will need to install. So that's survival and serve minor. Um, they're the ones we're going to be using to show just the basics of survival analysis in R. Um, if you, when you install them with the install.packages function, it will install other packages as well that are um, the dependencies of survival and serve minor. Um, so there's the two ones you do need to install. So with survival analysis, we're not going to be talking too much about the concept of survival analysis, when it's appropriate and how to do it per se. Um, it's going to rely on a little bit of you already knowing the concepts. Um, the purpose of these videos in this workshop series isn't to teach you the statistical concepts um, as much as it's to teach you R and show you how to do those things in R. Um, so if you want to learn more about spiral analysis, um, contact us. We can recommend some other resources for you or we can help you out with whatever project you're doing. So let's jump across to R here. So I'm going to call in my two packages there. We can see here is in this red script that it's giving me a warning um, that it's loading other packages that it needs. So it's loading required packages. So it's ggplot2, ggpubr, regritter. Um, so they're the packages that are also required um, for serve minor to be used. And it's also told me that if there are a couple of different version consistencies. Um, version consistencies aren't a big deal. Um, generally, sometimes it's just if you're off by a slight version number, it just wants to let you know. Um, if Maybe if I haven't updated R for a while, all these packages are really new compared to what I'm doing. For example, here, my R version on this computer is 3.6.2. So that's the version from late last year. But these packages, when I installed them on this computer, are 3.6.3. .3. Um, so it shouldn't be much difference, but that can be always something I can check to see if things aren't happening um, as I want them to. Okay, so for the data set we're going to use in this video, we're actually not going to call in a data set. A lot of the packages um, in R, and already even some of the base packages in R, have data sets available to you. And these are Example data sets that are used by everyone. Uh, one of the most famous, or famous, one of the most commonly used ones is the motor cars data set. So you'll see a lot of example R um, websites use that data set because everyone can access it and um, try and replicate the results when they're practicing. Um, so for today, we're going to be using the lung data set from the survival package. So because we've already library in or got the survival package in um, the lung data set is already available to us so I can just go straight here go head lung so even though it's not showing up in my environment I still have access to it um, there are ways to get it into my environment so I can inspect it as well but we won't worry about that today um, so I can see here from the head of the lung data set there's a time variable um, per person status, age, institution, um, sex, a couple of different um, biological, medical variables um, with my dimension. So the DIM function will tell me how big the lung data set is. So it tells me that's 228 rows of 10 columns. And a quick summary will summarize each variable for me. These are always good things to do when you've got a new data set to play with. Okay, so we're going to get a um, survival curve for the overall survival. We've got the time variable here. That's our survival time. And we've got our status. Um, depending on what school of thought you belong to as to whether you should use 0, 1, or 1 and 2, because um, it's a bit of an older data set, this uses the 1 and 2. Um, sorry, we, this uses the 1 and 2 notation. For life and death. So we've got serve one. I'm making this object serve one here. I'm using the serve fit function. 
but inside I'm using the serve function first. So this is where it can get a little bit complicated. Um, so the serve fit function is what we're going to make our survival code with, but to do that first we have to make a survival object. So serve takes the inputs of the time and status. So basically that's just taking in the status of whether the, the um, subject is alive or dead, or broadly speaking, whatever thing we're looking at in our survival analysis. And then the time, vari the time variable is our time variable for that status. So serve makes a survival object, and we take the output from that function into the serve bit function. Now to make a survival per based on just overall survival, we do need to have this tilde one here. Um, so the, sub, the circuit function requires a formula notation, which we've seen in previous videos. Um, so if we wanted a survival curve per um, gender or per some other factor, we'd set it up like formula notation like we've done before, say with the t-test for linear model, where we'd have the survival object tilde and then the variable of interest to split them. Because we're not interested in splitting here, it's just the overall survival, we just use tilde one. And we have data equals lung to say where our variables are coming from for the serve fit and the serve function. So of course I could just run this line of code here and just get some basic information, the number of subjects, the number of events, the medium time to event, etc. But of course, like we saw in previous videos with other tests and models, we can get more information out of the function output if we save it as an object. So that's what we're doing here. I'm going to save it as this object serve one, which we can see up in our environment is a list of 16 different things. And of course, I can just basically print that and get the same information. Um, if I wanted to make sure I just wanted to see that stuff really quickly, I can scroll through here to see what else I might want to get out of there. You can see there's a few other standard errors, sensor variables, types, confidence intervals. And of course, like other previous things, we can use the summary um, function to get more out. So the summary function gives us a lot more information, gives us a breakdown of the survival over the entire data set. But what we can also do is access specific things out of the summary using the dollar sign. And we can just get a brief summary of the survival using um, summary dollar sign table. So this gives us a little bit more information in terms of root mean and standard error um, and max records. So I encourage you to look through the surfit function documentation over here in your help screen. Um, we can look up surf it. You can see what you get out of there. It's always good to look up the documentation when you're using a function for the first time. Um, another thing we can use the summary function for is to get the survival at a specific time. So previously when we used the summary function, we got this large table of survival at lots of different times, but we can specifically ask for the survival at say one and two years. So how we do that is we have the summary function, the survival circuit object that we're interested in, and then we can have the times input of when, which times we're interested in getting the survival estimate for. So I've got, I'm interested in getting the survival at one and two years, but because I know my data is stored and analyzed in days, I've got one and two and I'm times them by 365 for the number of days in a year. Because just that little bit there will give me 365 and 730. So the two values I'm interested in finding survival for, I run that line of code here. I get the time I'm interested in, the risk and events, the survival estimate, including the standard error and the confidence intervals for that survival. So that's how I can get that out if I want it. Now I can also calculate the survival curve separately by other variables like I suggested before. Um, this time I'm putting sex in there instead of one in the formula notation and I'll get a survival curve calculated separately for each sex in the data set. So I'm going to control enter, saving it as the object serve two. And I print out that input. And I can see here that it's given me different um, 
summary statistics for each sex in terms of the median time of survival and other things. Like before, I can do summary dollar sign table to get a little bit more information. And I can also do the two year survival like before. So the one and two year survival like before. So I can here, see here for sex equals one, um, the median survival time, standard error, risk, and all those other summary statistics. Now, it seems like there might be a little bit of a difference in survival time between the genders here. Um, survival time seems to be a little bit um, longer or more surviving at the different time points for sex equals two. So let's test that. And we can do that with the log rank test. The log rank text, log rank test is your friend. This is done with the function serve diff. And just a reminder, we can either look up function serve diff here in our help window, or we can also use the um, question mark before a function name. Because that'll look up the documentation for us. And we can see here that we need the very similar to um, very similar to serve fit. Serve diff takes a formula, data, and a few other inputs and just does a different output. So the serve diff function will be the log rank test as default. Um, always check the default to different functions by looking at the documentation, description and other information there. So what we've got here is we've got the serve diff function. We have the serve object again here. So if we were to do, if we were doing lots of analysis on this survival, we might save this output from the serve function as its own object and put that in the serve fit and the serve diff functions. That's a possibility to you. Um, or we can do what we're doing here and just calling the function name for the data each time. It's totally up to you. But do note that serve takes a capital S here. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, so we've got serve, we've got the function notation to say we want it split by sex, the data, and I'm gonna save this as an object because that's how I'm gonna use it. So if I run that line of code and then print the output to the screen. You can see here, I've got a bit of information about the test. I also get my chi-square value and my p-value for the test. P-value is 0 0.001, suggesting there is a significant difference in survival time. Um, now, because of the output of the print of the serve diff function, you only get p-value to this many decimal places. If you want a more specific p-value, say it gets very small, and you want a bit more um, precision in your p-value, this line of code here will calculate it for you. Um, so that just might be something you're interested in um, to get a more accurate p-value. Okay, the next thing you might, might be interested in doing is Cox regression. So this is done with the Cox PH function. Again, we've got the capital S serve function there, making a survival object. We're splitting by sex, got the same data. If I run that line of code, I get this information. So I've got my like likelihood ratio test to one degree of freedom and my p-value, um, coefficient and exponent of coefficient, or exponential coefficient, I mean. Um, and again, I could save the output of that Cox PH function and then put it into the summary, or I can just do summary around it myself. There are many different ways to use these functions, but it is always important, I think, to get the output of a test or model and put that output somehow into a summary function, whether by saving it and then putting it in the summary function first, or just putting a summary function around the original function like I'm doing here. And here I get a little bit more information about a few different things. Um, so while it doesn't say it explicitly, this exponential of the coefficient is your hazard ratio. Um, and we also then get um, our confidence intervals down here as well for the hazard ratio. Okay, now we're gonna move on to some visualization. So we're gonna make some survival curves. Um, 
And so this is where it's useful to have saved output from before. We're going to use our serve fit output from when we split the survival curves by sex, which is our object serve two. And we're going to make some cap and Maya curves. So this is done with a function gg serve plot. Um, very simple name. So all our, if I just want a really basic um, cap and Maya plot straight away, I can just run that with just the survival object there or the serve fit um, output object, I mean. And that will produce this plot here, where I have the two survival, a couple of my curves um, for the two sexes with survival probability going down over time. So that's a very straightforward, quick way to make a couple of plot. Um, but of course, I can add more, add more things and more details to this figure if I want to. Um, feel free to check the documentation for more. I'm just going to show you a few different things. Um, I can add a few things like a confidence interval, um, median lines, and some p-values to it. So this is just with this information here, um, changing defaults to ch changing values from the defaults to true, and adding a median line. And I can see the difference here, where I've got a slightly faded area for the confidence interval, and I've got some vertical median lines, which I've defined using the V here for the median line. So this shows the 50% mark for the two curves. Um, there's also lots of other things I can do. So if you're interested, you can also add a few other things like here. And what that will give you is a risk table down the bottom, which you can't quite see. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make that just a bit bigger. It's going to reset. I'll just zoom. Oh, there we go. And so it gives me a, also a risk table down the bottom that lines up with the survival curve at the top. Give me a bit of information as the um, survival drops over time. So that's a really quick introduction to survival analysis in R. Again, this hasn't looked at teaching survival analysis per se, um, but it showed you, if you're familiar with survival analysis, how to get started with survival analysis in R. Um, check the documentation for all the functions we've used to see what else you can do with those functions. Um, there are other packages available for survival analysis, but the ones we've used seem to be the most popular um, and the ones we regularly use. Um, and of course, the best way to learn R is by doing R. So just give it a go, find a data set to work with and put the hard work in to learn it for yourself and you'll be rewarded. Uh, thank you very much.